Hello, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra, and today I'm starting a, a new little series on MongoDB. And it'll be a, a pragmatic little tutorial to help you get up and running quickly to understand the basics. Perhaps in the future we'll worry about the more advanced pieces, but for now we're just going to focus on uh, how to use it correctly. Uh, today we're not going to worry about installing it either. We're, we're just going to assume that you've read the directions on how to install and have it installed on your system. If you want, there are Mongo Docker images which you can easily instantiate and I'll uh, and start up and I'll do that today to show you how to run this inside of Docker. First things first, let's run the Docker image for Mongo. And I'm going to map a local directory here. I have a, a, a directory called db that I want to mess with. And we're going to map it to slash data slash db, which is by default where Mongo puts its database storage. And we're just going to run Mongo. And we're going to use the default entry point for the system. Now, the first time you do this, I've already set this up so it is much faster. The first time you run your MongoDB, it's going to set up everything and it's going to take a minute or two. So be aware of that. So I have this Docker image running with Mongo. I'm going to quickly identify the name of that so I can link them. And so I'm going to create another Docker container that is going to be the client. This is all because I like to use Docker a lot. You can simply install Mongo on your local computer and run everything from there. This is just a quick setup within Docker. We need to make sure and link our Mongo instance that is running to our local container that we're going to have as a client and I'm going to run bash this time off of that client and as always I have some environmental variables set because I've linked it so I'm just going to run mongo and you can pass in by default it will try to connect to the local host on port 27017 because I'm in a docker container I'm going to connect to a remote host which is defined in the Mongo port uh, 27017, uh, this environmental variable. And now I've connected. The first command is that we want to see the, the databases that we have installed on our environment. And because it's brand new, there's nothing there other than an admin and a local. Now, the beauty of Mongo is that I don't have to sit down and define everything and create it. Just the moment I start using it, it becomes available to me. And what I mean by that is if I want to create a new database, I just have to simply type use and then the name of my new database, in this case, Dark Zebra. And I've automatically switched to it. If I do show DBs again, you'll notice that it, it does not show up yet. And that's because even though I am currently using the Dark Zebra database, I have not written anything to it. So we are going to first uh, talk about the DB object. If I type in DB, I see the name of my currently selected database. And Mongo is written, uh, is very JavaScript centric. So pretty much if you're good at javascript and you are used to using javascript it's going to be very familiar to you i can type db dot hit tab to get suggestions and you can see i have a bunch of uh, methods here on this db object if i type a name like add user and don't pass in the parameters it's going to actually give me the code for the add user method 
And you can see here, this is a deprecated function. If you're used to traditional relational databases, you'll know that in a database we create tables or relations and those each have records. And so we have the equivalent in Mongo, which is called a collection. And I can type in show collections and it will show me all of the collections, i.e. tables, that exist in this database. And right now, don't have any. So the first thing we're going to do is create a collection. And the way we create a collection is the same way we create a table or a database. We simply choose a name for it and then we have to insert a record. So in our case, we're going to call our collection quotes. So db.quotes and uh, there's a method called insert. Now that by itself is going to fail. Mongo needs a record, or in Mongo speak, a document to be inserted into this. So each record is called a document. And it's basically a JavaScript object. They call it BSON, which stands for a binary representation of this. And it has some additional details like uh, some type and some uh, additional binary level things. But for the most part, it is JSON which is just an object has brackets around it and then I can type a name such as or a, a field and a value author colon and then I can say Shakespeare and then another field of quote and we put in our text here and like that we hit enter and we have now inserted a record into our quotes collection. Now, if I type in show DBs, I now have a dark zebra database that has been uh, created and I can see the approximate size that it has currently. And if I type in show collections, I will see that I have quotes and uh, a, a system level collection just called system indexes and that's pretty much always there uh, we're not going to deal with that right now but we have a quotes collection and we can perform other operations on that for instance db.quotes uh, dot and then tab we can see other functions related to that right now we're only going to focus on a couple uh, first one being count if I call db.quotes.count, I will see that I have one record in there. If I insert an, another record, and well, let's do this first db.quotes find, and we can see that I have a record. And it's important to notice in here that I have this underscore ID with a type of object ID and this unique identifier. This is what Mongo does for every time every time you do an insert. If you do not automatically create a primary key item, it will create one for you with the name of underscore ID. So that is my primary key used to grab and find this record later on. And now I want to cover a second thing, which is that the reason Mongo and, and similar databases are called NoSQL is, is actually kind of a misnomer. It doesn't mean that they're not databases and they don't have relations, but what it means is that they're schema-less. As you saw, I just passed in a JSON object. In a relational database, if I wanted to create a table, I would have to define exactly what the, each of the records look like in that table. In Mongo, I just have to pass in and insert an object. And each of those objects can be very different from each other. I would not recommend creating collections full of very disparate uh, uh, documents, but it's, all, it's very good for things like when I, I have data that is in one do document that is not in another. For instance, I can type in here another quote, put the author as 
Well, we're going to do the quote first, and then we'll get to it. And it would be Eek Bain. I have no idea how to pronounce this, but it's a famous quote from John F. Kennedy. And this quote was given in the year 1963. Now, I don't have a year for my Shakespeare quote, but I can put one in here even though I haven't defined it in my other documents. Another nice benefit of, of a Mongo document is I can create sub-documents. For instance, for my author this time, instead of creating it as a string, I could say, create another object here. I'm going to close off my other object just so I don't forget to. And this now I can have a first name of John, a middle initial of F, and a last name of Kennedy. I hit enter and I've now created another record. And that record is a little bit different from my previous record. And that's okay. Many times when you're working in databases, you might have some entities that are very related, but one has this attribute and another group has that attribute based upon a whole bunch of variety of, of situations. That is very doable and encouraged inside of Mongo. One of the benefits of using an object or a document database, a schemaless database over just a, a normal relational database. Once again, db.quotes.find, and now I have two records, and you'll notice that it's put this sub document in there. Very, very handy. Now, I'm not going to go over a whole lot else today other than we can create and insert objects and find them and we'll go over in more depth in another video how to work with these collections and these documents better but for the meantime i am going to say uh let's do another count i have two records and now we want to drop our quotes we decided we don't need it so we're going to drop our quotes collection so i just type db.quotes type dot and i have in here a drop method i hit enter it says true that means it it correctly dropped it i type in show collections and now it's gone the same thing very similar can happen for the database if i need to drop the database i type in db very quickly make sure that you're in the right database before you do this so a good practice would be to make sure by typing in use dark zebra or just type in db to make sure you're there and you go db dot drop database remember that this db represents the currently selected database i hit enter and it's been dropped and if i do show dbs I am back to having only two databases. Now, here's an interesting thing. If I type DB, I am still on Dark Zebra, which means once again, if I create an empty object here and insert it and do show DBs, it's now created it again. Make sure and switch away if you really want to drop your database. And with that, um, that's my very basic intro to MongoDB. And I will start going over more details in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe and rate. And have a great day. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.